Hey everybody, in this video we're going to be talking about Stephen King's 1993 collection, Nightmares and Dreamscapes. We'll show you what to look for when trying to identify first US and first UK editions of the book. The first US edition was published by Viking, and this is one heck of a big book. It is beefy. And one of the things to look for right off the bat is if there is a reflective golden foil effect to the title on the front cover. I have seen um, lots and lots and lots of copies of this that have the same artwork, the same dimensions, but are book club editions. And one of the ways that you can tell, well, it doesn't have a price, that's the, probably the biggest giveaway, but another way you can tell is that the letters on the cover will just be like printed in a golden yellow um, ink but they will not be foil, they will not be reflective. So that's one thing to look for. Inside the front cover, right up here, I'm gonna look for a price, US 2750, Canada, Canada 3299. Poor Canada, always having to pay more. There's the back jacket flap, author photo on the back of the dust jacket spine. On the copyright page, there will be a first a full number line, a number line which is really handy. It's easy to tell what you've got. And the number line will include the number one. If it includes the number one, you have a first edition uh, first printing. And whatever the lowest number is, if the lowest number is a three, that's a third printing. If it's a four, that's a fourth printing. First printings of this are not uncommon. Um, this is officially in the era where first edition runs of Stephen King books were hundreds of thousands, million or more copies. So this is, we are officially out of the um, rare and hard to find diamonds in the rough territory, and we are entering the common era, the the CE, if you will, but it's still, it's a good looking book. Underneath the jacket, SK's initials printed in a chunky font on the cover, imprinted and gold foil, blue cloth covering on the spine, and lettering in gold foil. Yeah. So, like I was saying, it's a big book, 816 pages. Um, it is a mammoth collection, and altogether a, a nice looking book and a good one to add to the collection. So, it is, um, it's not uncommon, but it can be hard. I mean, it is 30 years old, so, and it is so big, it can be hard to find one in really nice shape. But I would definitely recommend being patient and holding out until you find one in really nice shape because they are out there. And, you know, even in really nice shape, this is probably a $25 book um, on the outside. So if you find one that's really nice for $25 or less, then I would say that you found a pretty good deal. End papers are blue. Nice dark blue. So, yeah. Anyway, that is the first edition, first US trade edition of the collection Nightmares and Dreamscapes. Okay, so today we're going to take a look at the first UK edition of Nightmares and Dreamscapes. Uh, Nightmares and Dreamscapes uh, was published in the UK by Hutter and Stoughton in 1993, same year as the US edition was published. Um, this edition uh, features some pretty cool uh, artwork on the front um, that has, if you look at these, at these carvings carefully, they're all characters from uh, the stories in the book, which is kind of cool. Um, and, uh, what else? <laughs> so Nightmares and Dreamscapes is King's first short story collection since Skeleton Crew, 
appeared in 1985, so it was uh, about eight years later. Um, it has a few brand new pieces in it, um, a couple of pieces of nonfiction as well. Uh, and um, I'm going to go into each uh, of these stories individually, like we did with Night Shift and Skeleton Crew. Uh, the U.S. trade edition here, um, if you want to check to see if your copy is a first printing, you're looking for the 1699 UK price on the jacket flap. And uh, the copyright page will not have any indication of later printing. Uh, what else is there to say about the UK edition? Um, not too much, I guess. And we're going to take a look, as I said, at each of these stories uh, individually um, in uh, in subsequent videos. So, uh, so in the meantime, um, Mark has shown you the U.S. first edition. This is the U.K. first edition, and um, thanks for checking it out. Like with Dolores Claiborne, Nightmares and Dreamscapes, the following year, 1993, was also released as a limited edition Christmas gift edition from Hodder and Stoughton. Uh, 2,000 copies in a slipcase with a facsimile signature. Um, it is one that doesn't get a lot of attention. It's not as as interesting or eye-catching or deluxe, but it is technically out there, and it's the only limited edition release that Nightmares and Dreamscapes has yet received. And if you're working on building your collection and you're looking into limited editions, uh, it could be a relatively inexpensive one to try to track down um, although I I don't know if it is necessarily high quality just the, that it's limited edition doesn't necessarily mean that it's have, has a sewn binding or premium materials or anything like that but but it is a thing and it is out there and I wanted to mention it so I vividly remember when Nightmares and Dreamscapes was released. I was 10 years old, and by the time I was 10 years old, I was firmly aware and interested in what Stephen King was doing. And first, I don't remember the hardcover, I remember the mass market paperback edition. And the thing that I remember most of all is that there is an illustration, a single full page illustration tipped in. It's tipped into the mass market paperback or at least it was when I first saw it. It's tipped into the hardcover. And it was the first time that I had ever seen such a, such a thing, uh, an adult book with an illustration tipped in. Not only that, it was an illustration that I was already familiar with because it is an illustration by children's author and illustrator Chris Van Allsburg. I don't remember the exact, it's not, I don't remember the title of the book that the illustration comes from, but I had, I, I was familiar with the book at the time, and I was like, wait, what? What is this picture doing in this book? So I was very intrigued, and seeing that it was a collection, um, and I was quite young, I, I found it much more, um, much more inviting uh, to dig into a book that was full of 20, 30 page um, stories rather than a single novel of hundreds and hundreds of pages long. So I did have a copy of this back in the day and it has been a while since I read the stories but it has, it's another very eclectic collection. So it includes, um, it includes short fiction, it includes a uh, screenplay or script, um, it includes a non-fiction piece about Little League Baseball, and it's my favorite part of these collections, um, well not my favorite part, the, the stories are my favorite part, but I love when Stephen King includes notes, like background context notes about the stories, and he certainly does that in Nightmares and Dreamscapes, which I really appreciate. But this is, I want to say, I may be mistaken, but I believe by a long shot, Nightmares and Dreamscapes is Stephen King's longest collection. 
um, and it is one of his longest books of all time. And this thing, one, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-three, twenty-three, almost two dozen, almost two dozen pieces in this book, over eight hundred pages, which is really interesting. And it it has some of his more famous short fiction. Um, Dolan's Cadillac was released in a standalone edition, um, which which Noah showed in another video. Um, Omni's Last Case was also in um, in a standalone edition, really interesting piece. Um, Crouch End, My Pretty Pony, which I've shown in another video, the um, ridiculously overproduced limited edition from Knopf and the Whitney Museum that includes just a single story across an entire oversized book. Um, there's some good stuff here. You know they got a hell of a band, Chattery Teeth. That one kind of reminds me of the story from Skeleton Crew, The Monkey, in that it turns another um, childhood gadget and gizmo into an absolute um, source of nightmare terror, which is kind of perverse and what I, I really like. Um, yeah, there's some good stuff in this. I need to go back and and revisit this one. It doesn't um, stick out in my memory as much as Night Shift, as much as Skeleton Crew, some of the more recent collections. I do know that I had this as a kid. I don't think that I read, um, I read bits and pieces. I don't think that I read the entire collection straight through. Um, I had a bad habit of just um, kind of reading the first page or so of a story, and if it caught my attention, I would stick with it. And if it didn't, I would I would move on, but hey, I was 10. I was a kid, but so anyway, it is still a, like I said earlier, it's not an uncommon book. It's, it's pretty easy to find. I'm not exactly sure the first print run, but this is in the era when first print runs were a million or more copies. So this is very common. And if you can find a really nice copy, just a really sharp copy for 25 bucks or less, then you're doing good. And if you find a copy that has some condition issues uh, or is overpriced, I, you know, recommend waiting. I think waiting is one of the most important keys to, to collecting um, because stuff is out there and it will turn up. But anyway, I don't have, I don't have a whole ton to say about Nightmares and Dreamscapes, but it's a cool collection um, and it is a massively long one. And definitely worth, um, definitely worth checking out. But anyway, thank you very much uh, to Noah for your support in showing another amazing first edition. And thank you to you, the viewer, for for watching and for your support. And uh, wherever you are, I hope you have a great rest of your day. And I will talk to you later. Bye.